Come on and give God some praise. Oh, give God some praise. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, give him a praise that matches his greatness. Give him a praise that matches what he's done for you. No one can praise him for you. No one can give him the glory that's due his name for you. You only know what he's done for you. You only know how he's brought you out. You can tell us, but we can't feel it like you can feel it. We don't know like you know. So lift your voice and give God praise. Hallelujah. Let everything that's breathing, let that be your provocation today. Simply because there's breath in your body. Lift your voice and give God praise. Because you took that next breath, and that next breath, and that next breath. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, Jesus. You're good, God. You're good, Lord. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, let the people say the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Let the people say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you're so good. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you're so good.
You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. You are. You are good. You are. You are good all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. You are. You are good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you're so good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you're so good. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you're so good. every nation people from every nation and tongue. from generation from generation to generation we the psalmist when he says I will bless the Lord at all times and he says his praise will continually as soon as I stop praising him I think about something else he did and oop there goes another praise oop there goes another hallelujah there goes another thank you Jesus because he's been that good it's your worship he's after I love the scripture. It says, the Father seeketh such to worship him. It's interesting that God doesn't go looking for a whole bunch of other things. He goes looking for worship. May we be found of him today as worshipers. Come on, everybody, just lift your hands in the room. Here we are, Lord. Here we are in our state, in our condition, in our circumstance. We extend our hearts to you with our hands. To our God in heaven, we extend a heart of worship. A heart of thanksgiving, a heart of praise.
is my worship. Father, receive my worship. worship. All of my worship. worship. Here's my worship. worship. All of my worship. worship. Father, receive my worship.
it to him right now. No singing right now. Just give him worship. Come on, let's make our commitment right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's your worship, Lord. Here's your praise, Lord. The psalmist says praise waits for you. Oh, God, it's I came here with a praise. I came here with worship. in the room. Lift your hearts in the room. Lift your praise in the room. Lift your thanksgiving in the room. Come on, create a throne for him to rest upon. Somebody put their hands together right now. You don't have to stop worshiping God. Come on, come on. You don't have to stop worshiping because the praise team has stopped. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Anybody just wave their hands right now. Give God up. Come on, give him a worship. Give him a worship this afternoon. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. My God, my God. Hallelujah. As long as I'm breathing, I will always what? Worship. I will always worship him. As long as I'm breathing, I will always. My God, my God. Worship God. Uh, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all praise. He gave us a mouth to what? Worship him. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I don't know some of you. I don't know how some of you can just stop right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But can I get a few faith believers? few worshipers right now will stand up with me just raise your hand just one more time give God come on come on and just worship me in your own way come on in your own way come on open your mouth and praise him open your mouth and thank him oh shada he come on shada hallelujah he's worthy he's worthy Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, shout out. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes we don't give God enough time. Sometimes we want to rush and say what the next thing is going to be on the program. But sometimes we get your most shot time. Sometimes we just got to just step back a little bit and just worship God. We just got to take time to worship him. He's in the house. God is here. God is here. God is here. Because you brought him. Sometimes we just need to take a little time to worship, to give him glory, to give him honor, to give him praise. Has he been good to anybody? Has he been good to anybody? Hallelujah! Has he been good to anybody? Oshada, ikabo shata. something when he was preaching when that pandemic came along COVID we couldn't get to the church you couldn't even sometimes call your pastor I know some here they couldn't call me because I was struck by it he said sometimes when that when it happened you we had our own altar he he allowed us to make our own altar at our own house we couldn't make it to God's house. He gave us an altar at our own house. So that we can just call on his name. I could not. I could not. And I give God glory and praise. It took me a while when it struck me. I couldn't walk from here to that chair without being out of breath. But I thank God I had a praying wife. When I couldn't call nobody else to lay hands on me and pray for me in the name of Jesus. And I'm not the only one in this house was struck by it. But God gave us enough breath to open our mouth. I was sitting there looking at some service, some faith services, and all I could do is just lift up my hands. Oh, shout out. And just praise God for the little breath that was coming out of my lips. But now, since a lot of us been healed, I can open up my mouth. I don't mind walking around praise. I don't mind. I think we got some people right now who are still on their feet right now. Come on, lift up your hands. Amen. And give God another glory of worship. Come on, church.
You can be seated. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got so many. I have so many here. It's so good to see so many of our friends and family that are here. We praise God for you for this family and friends day to come and worship with us today. Can you imagine when we all get to heaven? <laughs> what a glorious day that will be. But we bless God. We bless. We're going to. Amen. We thank God for Pastor, Pastor Terrell Jones and Ariel Praise Team. Amen. Ushering in the presence of God in this house. Thank him. I thank him so much. Amen. Those who come along today, we appreciate and we thank God for you. I'm asked to, amen, the, the brothers to come at this time. And amen, we have a, a speaker to come all the way from Buffalo, New York, but he's no stranger to us. Amen. Been birthed right out of this church. And we thank God, amen, for Bishop, amen, Fair and his wife, First Lady. Fair, amen. And, and all those here. I seen a old pastor, amen, niece and a We want to bless, we want to bless, amen, the man of God, amen. Today, you can write your checks out to uh, uh, Pastor Daryl Fair, Bishop, however you want to put it, long the, la long the last name is Fair on the check, amen. We want to be a blessing, amen, to him, uh, and we thank God for those that are here today. Glad to see each and every one. I want you to look at somebody. Say, I'm so glad to see you here. Amen. Co Pastor Denise. Co Pastor Denise. <laughs> Good to see you. Amen. So many are here. Pastor Turner. Aggressive, amen. I'm so glad to have you and your companion here. And you can, amen, come and join us on the pulpit if you like. But we're glad to have you here. Let's put our hands together for, amen, Pastor Jones. Progressive, right here in the city. Right here in the city of Anderson. Amen. And so I think this is my first time. I might have run across you somewhere on the streets. Uh, but I'm so glad to have you here in the house of the Lord. Amen. And also my these pastors behind me, so glad to have all my, my pastor's friend that's here and everyone that's here. Amen. We praise God for you today. Amen. Amen. Did everybody greet somebody? Uh, did you just turn around and greet someone? Did you? Did everybody greet someone today? That's here? Come on. Make yourself welcome. Amen. Greet somebody. Yes, 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 yes. So. <laughs> we praise God for everyone. Pastor Williams, amen. Glad to see you. You just walked in. Yes, sir. So glad to see you. I'm sorry I overlooked you. You can come be with us if you like on the pulpit. Amen. So glad to have you here with us. All right? So glad to have you here with us. We can make room. We can get chairs now. I know you only see, but we can put some out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If y'all, what, what, uh, where my, where my brother go? There he is. I'm going to wear y'all. Just, just bring me one more. You know, prepare the man of God. All right, all right, all right, all right. We praise God. We're going to bring this, this praise team back, amen, before the man of God come up. Let's put our hands together one more time for them.
just singing about his greatness. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Hallelujah. Great is our God. As you remain standing, as you remain standing, amen. I overlook Pastor Bridges over here. Amen. So glad to have you here, sir. Amen. 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 Man, I got family here from Texas. All right, good. Right there in the back. Look at that. Brother Daniel, okay. Melissa, all right. Good to see you guys. Amen. We're so glad to have everyone here. As you stand, amen, we have a great anointing, a man of God. He has been elevated, amen, to Suffolk and Bishop, Daryl Fair. Come on, let's put our hands together. Promotion comes not from the east or the west. Promotion comes from God. And so we thank God for the word we heard this morning. I know God has laid a word in his heart for us this afternoon. So I bring to the sacred desk right now, amen, one that's been birthed out of this church, our friend, amen. Let's put our hands once again for Bishop Daryl Fair. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your mercy toward each and every one of us. We're thankful and grateful for all that you have done this week and the things that you've done today, bringing friends and family together to fellowship and to praise you and to magnify your name and to see lives changed through the power of your word. We ask once again, Lord, that you would feed us, feed us out of your word until our thoughts change. Feed us until we make better choices with our lives. Feed us, Lord, until we can point to your word at work in our lives, the results of our faith in you. I pray, Lord, once again, that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And because your word says so, I thank you for life-changing and healing taking place in this house. Your word says that you can send the word and it heals. And so, Lord, I thank you that somebody's walking out of here with a miracle. I thank you that somebody's walking out of here the divine impartation. I thank you that somebody's walking out of here clearer than when they came in. Somebody came in with pain, but they'll leave without it because of your word. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory and we'll give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Every glad heart said amen. Would you do me a favor and just give God praise one more time in the sanctuary. may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. It's again good to be in the house of God and once again it's good to be uh, home and to share and as the late District Elder Hosea Barnes would say to mingle our voices together and uh, <laughs> I'm telling you it's just I can do this all day. <laughs> And uh, but just grateful um, to the opportunity for the opportunity to come and to come home and to be a part of this this celebration of just family and friends. And uh, some of us we've been around family and friends uh, this weekend, of course, with Thanksgiving. And um, you didn't think it uh, robbery to spend some of your time tonight uh, in the house of God. And so we're grateful and thankful and certainly we are honoring the angel of this house the shepherd that God has sent and has set in this house and we thank God for Suffolk and Bishop Eddie Robinson come on let's give God praise amen come on amen hallelujah amen amen and um, I, I just um if you'll allow me, and let me just pass on uh, just a little bit of information. You will never make God jealous 
thanking him for who he gave you. you. You'll never make him jealous. You won't take anything from him. Thanking him for whom he has given to you. The Bible says he'll give gifts unto men. And uh, so the Bishop Robinson is a gift from God to this congregation at this time to shoulder the responsibility of ministry uh, in this house and in this season. We honor uh, also uh, Lady Robinson, uh, who always keeps her hands busy in the ministry. And thank God for her. And to Pastor Boards, who's here, thank God for him. Amen. And um, let me bore you for three minutes this time. I won't take five, I'll take three. Um, Pastor Boards was the first one really to, um, I was going to say take us uh, to uh, do outreach, um, but I can't say he took us to do uh, outreach. He made us. Um, we had to get in the van and we went to uh, the houses of the mothers and we would sing songs out of the hymnal and have prayer and then we get back in the little van and then go on down to the next house and do the same thing. And um, he taught us uh, even when we didn't know really how to hear the voice of God for ourselves. He taught us how to do ministry by serving other people. And I'm grateful for that. He's been there for our family down through the years. And uh, even now, just grateful, grateful for him and his wife. Would you do me a favor, a personal favor, and give God praise for Pastor Boards? And I served in this church for years and years and years and grateful to him and his ministry to Apostle Denise in the house. We're grateful. Um, I'm always nervous when it's time to preach or teach. And then when certain people walk in the room, you get extra nervous. Um, I'm surrounded by good preaching and teachers all around this room. And um, I was all right until she walked in. I saw her worshiping right through here. And I said, oh, Jesus. Um, but I'm grateful for her leadership uh, down through the years. And uh, my wife always says and thinks highly of you, uh, even in your absence. And we're grateful for not only for you, um, but for your late husband's ministry and the fruit thereof and as changing the world even now. And we're grateful to the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastor Jones is here. We're grateful for him. And I'm just, I'm standing over there thinking he's just poised for some great things that God has in store for him. It's just, it's, it's one thing, the Bible talks about the anointing flowing from the head down, but if you're out of place, the oil doesn't hit you. But if you stay in place, the oil hits you right where it needs to, and you are in the right place at the right time for God to do everything that he said he was gonna do. And you are not behind schedule. You are right on time. Let me get out of that. You are right on time. Right on time. And Pastor Frank Scott, and just I didn't have to do anything this weekend. I was just kind of uh, in his house eating up all their food. Uh, <laughs> but I'm grateful for him and, and his wife and their kindness and their uh, uh, hospitality for me and my wife and my, my two daughters who decided to come to church tonight. I'm just teasing. They were in church earlier. They were in church in Muncie. Uh, they were in church in Muncie. But I'm grateful. Again, my wife is here. We've been married almost. Well, we're married now. I've been so used to saying almost. We didn't cross that line. Uh, we've been married for 25 years. Last in October. And I'm grateful for me and um, 
they will get me probably when I get home or in the car, but I'm going to ask my two daughters to stand. Yeah. There's Lauren, there's Monique. Amen. Grateful. All right, you can be seated. You can be seated in the house of God. Uh, we're just grateful, grateful. I see friends and family, and uh, I won't... I won't sing a hymn because I may miss up the verses and Jermaine to get me after church. And you sang that wrong. It's, it is a fact, not tis a fact that God in Christ are one. So I won't even do that, but it's always good to see him and, um, and family that's here. Anybody need a word from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Would you go with me to the first chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew? Matthew chapter number one and verse twenty. Matthew chapter number 1 and verse 23. I will give you fair warning. Um, not only do I need your prayers and your support, um, but I'm probably going to ruin Christmas for some of you uh, in the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, it'll be the Bible, I promise you that, but um, um, I'm probably going to ruin it for some of you. Um, but for those that can kind of hang with the preacher just a little bit, uh, we'll get where we, we need to be. Uh, I'm, I see uh, my good friend, Pastor Turner, in the back, and, and I say that because um, there, were a, there was a time in ministry where no one was asking me to come and preach. Um, but Progressive uh, would always open their doors for me to come and to share. And when we left Indianapolis to start the church, and there they came to the consecration service, loaded up in their cars and whatnot. And then when we moved to Buffalo and had the installation service there, they loaded up and came to Buffalo. Um, and so um, there's a few churches um, that I will do all that I can uh, to serve. Progressive is one of them. You just let me know. We'll make the rest happen. And we're grateful to the Lord. Matthew chapter number one, verse number 23. Suffolk Bishop Wright, God bless you, sir. Amen. I'm telling you, old Boy Scout leaders and bishops and whatnot, I'm telling you, I'm surrounded. Um, Matthew 1 and verse number 23. And um, once again, if you say amen real quick, I can sit down. But if you take long to say amen, I feel like I didn't make the point, so I add five more minutes to it. Um, but if you say amen real quick, amen. a little slow on this side. Y'all just added five minutes right there. Matthew 1 and 23, the Bible says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is what? Let's read verse 23 with some power tonight and in unison. Ready? Let's read. A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Before you take your seats, do me a favor and help me just announce my little subject tonight. And just look at somebody and tell them, say, you are worth the risk. You may be seated. You may be seated. It, it won't make sense just yet. Um, hey, cuz. Hey, man, make sure that thing worked. All right. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Worth, do me a favor, just push somebody in front of you and tell them, say, you are worth the risk. One of the fathers, one of the spiritual fathers in, in our area, um, his name is Bishop T. Anthony Brawner. 
And Bishop Bronner said something. We were in his office, Pastor Williams, we were in his office talking. Um, some other pastors and I, we had finished some ecumenical something or other, and we were in his office talking. And he said, young men, ministry is a burdensome joy. He describes ministry as a burdensome joy. It is a burden because you carry the weight of ministry and the lives and livelihood spiritually of others as you stand to preach and teach the word of God. It is a joy when you see lives change because of the power of the word of God and the presence of his Holy Spirit. But he did not romanticize ministry. He did not take it to a place where it just seems as if, as Elder Ross would say, peaches and cream. It, it, he did not romanticize ministry. He made it realistic so that we would understand that you will have times in ministry where you are under the weight of ministry and the burden that that carries will be heavy sometimes but it's worth it when you see lives changed as you stay there and press ahead to see all that God has shared and ministry is not uh, romantic uh, in the sense of you know everything being you know nice and glossy ministry if you for those that may take notes from time to time tonight ministry is not romantic ministry is risky ministry is risky in the sense that you are stepping out on faith to do something that you don't always have all of the details for. But you're trusting God that as I step out to do what he wants me to do, whatever I don't know, he's going to make sure I know. Whatever I don't have, he's going to make sure mm -hmm, that I have it. Whatever I need, whether it's physical resources or human resources, He's going to make sure that I have it. Whatever problem that needs to be solved, he's going to make sure that it is solved. I say all of that to say that oftentimes we romanticize things. And when we romanticize things, uh, we tend to extract some of the reality out of a certain achievement. For those of us who have gone through school and you've got a couple of degrees or so, um, graduation is romantic. Everybody's in uh, their robes and caps and gowns and you've got dignitaries on the dais and you've got others that will give speeches and, and uh, the pomp and the circumstance that's there. You have the processional and the recessional and all of that's the romantic side. Um, but uh, you don't see the side of cramming in the middle of the night for an exam. You're not going to talk to me here. You don't, you don't always see the, uh, the stress of trying to go to the bursar's office and try to cut a deal so that you can stay on campus or stay in class. Do I have a witness in the house? When you don't have all your resources, you, you, you find it uh, unromantic to have to go in and try to talk to people and, and try to see what can, be, what can be done. Ministry is not romantic. It is risky. And when we romanticize certain things about ministry and about the things even in scripture, 
I think that when we romanticize reality, uh, the, the success of, that is achieved and all of the things that happen in scripture and even in our lives, it is either misrepresented or it is cheapened uh, because we don't get a chance to see the whole picture. And I know I, I, I'm dating myself just a little bit, but there are some of us in here, we remember, Pastor Blackman, we remember testimony service. We remember testimony service and people would get up giving honor to God who was ahead of my life and we would go through all of that and we would hear the testimonies of the saints if an individual began to go on like I am right now and, and on and on and on they would get up and say brother sister you can't what can't tell it all um, and what they were trying to do is give us the details of the story so that the celebration made more sense. If they just got up and said, I got a new house, you know, we might clap a little bit. But if I understand that you were put out of one house, now you had to go from couch to couch to get to where you are now, there seemingly is a greater praise because there's more details to the story. Sometimes it is necessary to tell the details of a story so that we don't romanticize where we are. We're in a season right now, as I push along, we're in a season right now where we are getting ready to once again romanticize Christmas season. Buckle up for just a moment. I'm getting ready to ruin Christmas for some of us because we're getting ready to romanticize Christmas. You will see cards that have beautiful Christmas nativity scenes in them. You will have, uh, you'll probably go through a, a grocery store or go through Target or wherever and you'll go to the card section if you're handing out cards or mailing cards. And there's probably going to be on one card a nativity scene. If you look up at the top of the card, there's going to be a star there and some, some, some ray of light coming off of that star down into this nativity scene. And if you got a good card, you'll have the silhouette of what looks like three kings bringing in gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And you'll have animals almost like in some prostrate worship position, uh, all of which you won't find nothing of the, of the sort in the Bible. You won't find, y'all getting quiet, you won't find that. It, it sounds good, uh, Pastor Bridges, it sounds good that, that it looks like the animals, even the cows laid down and just, you know, because the king is there. I'm, I'm of the mind Mindset that it stunk in the end. I'm of the mindset. I know, I know, I know y'all believe that they had air freshener and there was nothing there. The, the angels were there airing out the barn and all that kind of stuff. But I'm here to tell you, I believe the animals were making some noises. Y'all not going to talk to me here. I believe the ark that Noah built, it stunk. I believe, I believe. You don't have to believe it. I believe those animals, uh, uh, they, they don't have, y'all not going to talk to me here, so let me preach like I'm back in Buffalo. Those animals don't have the ability to reach behind themselves and take care of themselves. They, they drop stuff and keep on moving. Y'all not going to talk to me here. And you can't get me to believe that just because a child was born that the animals themselves had no idea. The people didn't know. How you know How you know that Big Bird knew what was going on? How you know that little cow knew what was going on? Please understand that we like to romanticize things. But I'm here to suggest Yes, if we romanticize the story of Christmas, oftentimes we will miss the very import of what actually happened in the text. Please understand, there's value in this story that we often like to gloss over because it's not pretty. We gloss over it because it's not romantic. We're getting ready to go into a season. Hallmark is going to have all kinds of movies that's out. And Lifetime is going to have all kinds of movies that are out there. Don't ask me to watch. You're going to have all kinds of movies that are out there. She likes that kind of stuff. I'm in a whole nother room. Why? Because there's only so much. I can't 
mistake. And I, I'm in a season. I'm in a season. I'm in. I'm just in a season. I'm in a season, sugar, where I cannot take the romanticizing of the Christmas story because what I see in Scripture is not romantic at all. What I what I see in Scripture is actually the power of choice at work when God sovereignly picks individuals that gives them an assignment and you see the rockiness of that assignment y'all not gonna believe me let's go to the scriptures in Matthew chapter number one and verse number 18 the Bible says now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise in other words this is how it happened this is how he came into the earth the first thing we understand the Bible says when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph y'all not gonna like me tonight a spouse to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost the word espouse there deals with the betrothal period of an arranged marriage no no Joseph didn't hand pick Mary oh I want that no it was an arranged marriage I know I know you thought tender was back there and they were swiping and he found Mary. Nope, didn't happen that way. You will find that in that culture, the marriages were arranged. Can I say something to you that may rock you? You are hard pressed to find a lot of scriptures that even talk about Joseph's love for Mary. Y'all not going to talk to me here. You won't find chapters upon chapters that talk about how much Joseph loved Mary. Oh, he loved her and oh he did this for her and oh he did that you won't find chapters upon chapters or verses upon verses of him falling in love with Mary the Bible says it was an arranged marriage he was espoused she was rather espoused to Joseph which is the betrothal period of the contract all the way up until the day of the marriage it was an exclusive contract where the families got together figured out the dowry and and all of that and then there was the celebration then the consummation of the marriage please understand that the story of Jesus was a part of that story deals with this arranged marriage hallelujah to God I feel help in the room now it was this arranged marriage and when they were going through that but trothal period what you will find is the bible says and she was found with child of the holy ghost you have to understand that god has sent gabriel to talk to mary and tell mary you're getting ready to have a son and all of that happened and the bible says in another recording of the text of the story you'll find that she goes into the hill country to visit with elizabeth look at somebody and say she went to see her cousin while she was there talking to her cousin, uh, the Bible says Elizabeth, who happens to be the mother of John the Baptist, she is already six months pregnant. Uh, Mary stays in the hill country about 11 or so miles away, uh, and she stays there until John the Baptist is born. Uh, so she stays there for th at least three months. Uh, Joseph has not seen his betrothed wife, uh, his espoused wife, uh, in three months. So when he sees her after three months, she has a little extra around the stomach area. Y'all not going to talk to me here. And he knows that he didn't do it. Y'all not going to talk to me here. Please understand that you're not going to find a whole lot of, oh, he loved her. You won't find a whole lot of that in the scriptures, which is the first point of tonight's little message. Please understand this. You don't have have to love the assignment to do the assignment I know some of us feel like God's never going to ask you to do anything you don't love to do I'm here to burst your bubble I'm here to tell you the truth and to wake you up that oft times God himself will ask you to do things that you in your flesh do not want to do you don't have to love it to obey him y'all not gonna talk to me here he's 
is not always going to bring you and I into something that we love. Now, it's a plus. It's icing on the cake if you love what he calls you to do. But don't you ever think that everything he calls you to do will be something that you love. You don't have to love the assignment, but tell your neighbor, you must do the assignment. Mm -mm, you got the wrong neighbor find you somebody else on the other side and just tell them say you don't have to love it to do it you don't have to yeah you ain't got to love it to do it uh, the bible says in this arranged marriage he finds out uh, that his wife uh, is now pregnant and uh, he has in his own mind what he wants to do uh, drop down the verse number 19 and verse number 20 the bible says joseph uh, uh, her husband uh, uh, being a just man uh, not an in love of man a just man uh, which means he's a righteous man he's not willing to make her a public example uh, now you might think that that well you know that seemed like he loved her I mean, he you know won't make her a public example uh, and uh, that might be a part of your argument but if you read the rest of the text uh, the bible says he was not willing to put her away privately uh, according to Deuteronomy anytime you entered into the betrothal period uh, and you were found not to have kept yourself, uh, uh, you could be divorced or gotten out of the contract or, according to Deuteronomy, you could be brought before the people and stoned to death. Uh, Joseph said, well, I don't want to do this publicly. Let me get rid of her privately. Well, let me put better language to it. I will divorce her privately. You won't find that on a Christmas card anywhere that Joseph was trying to divorce Mary. You're not going to find that on anybody's Christmas card uh, that he was thinking in himself, uh, listen, I uh, uh, I don't want to deal with this. I, I want to get out of this. I want to I want to do something different. I I thought I had a good thing. It seemed like it has messed up on me. So so let me get out of this privately. Uh, let me tell you something. He may not have wanted to divorce her publicly but look at your neighbor and say neighbor he did want to divorce her yes the bible said he didn't want to do it publicly but he was trying to do it privately verse 20 the bible says but while he thought on these things how can i do this how can i get rid of mary how you ain't gonna find it on a christmas card how can i get rid of mary how can i do this privately if i do this publicly she could actually die god understands the assignment and he recognizes that if he gets out of the contract mary now is uncovered she could get out he could get out of the contract Contract, but Mary could actually deal with being stoned to death. If Mary is stoned, then what's in her dies in the process. Oh, and he's about 33 years from that date. Y'all not going to talk to me here. So I got to save her to save him. Oh yeah, glory to God. So I send the heavenly angel to come and talk to him, to talk him out of divorce. I sent an angel to change what his flesh wanted to do. I sent somebody who's been in my presence to talk to Joseph and tell Joseph, you can't do what your flesh wants to do. In the book of Revelation, Pastor Boards, the Bible calls the angels of the church or the pastors of the church angels. Angels, uh, to the angel of the church of Sardis, uh, to the angel of the church of Thyatira, to the angel of the church of Laodicea. Uh, I wonder, I wonder, do we still uh, revere the voice uh, of the angels that God sent to us? Uh, that when your flesh want to do something else, uh, God can send a messenger. Y'all not going to talk to me here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, I thank God for the word. I thank God uh, because there are times in my life uh, when I don't want to do uh, what I know I should do. Uh, uh, Joseph said, listen, uh, how can I get out of this? Uh, how can I get out of what I, I don't want to deal with people talking. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, can I pause for a moment bring it into our day? Uh, the date was set. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, the, 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 the plane tickets were purchased. Uh, hotel 
walls were lined up. And then you get a text message saying, it's off. Y'all not going to talk to me here. You know how we talk in the family and God knows you know how we talk in the church. Honey, did you hear what I heard? Did you hear what happened in America? Man, he done put her to the curb. Man, she was went, she went somewhere for three months and came back pregnant. See, listen, listen, listen. She, it's them quiet ones you got to watch. Y'all not going to talk to me here. You, I know they know they say Mary is quiet, but you see what happened? Yeah, she was out there and she came back and now she's pregnant three months. You know how we talk and I'm praying to God uh, that we live such kinds of lives uh, that you know me uh, hallelujah and you know uh, our character uh, so no matter what you hear I ain't gonna have no help in here I know him uh, I know her uh, look at your neighbor and say I know what I know Hallelujah. Joseph said, I, I, I don't want to put up with that. I don't want to put up with people talking. I don't want to put up with the room of me. But God sent an angel to talk to him and said, Joseph, you can't get rid of her. While he thought on these things, verse number 20 says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee men thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost no man touched her glory to God she wasn't raped over in a field somewhere and she's unclean she didn't do this to herself God did God did this to her God put his hand on her can I tell you something for somebody in here please understand people are talking not because you did anything but because God's hand hey 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 his hand is on you hallelujah you didn't you didn't rob a bank you're not out selling drugs they're saying what they're saying because God put his hand on you I didn't even ask him to put his hand on me. I was minding my own business on the keyboard and on the organ. Hey, and he told me, I've called you to preach my word. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I didn't do this to myself. God did this to me. You got the wrong neighbor. Find you somebody else and say, God did this to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't call myself into this. I didn't bring myself into this. I didn't anoint myself. He said, listen, the Holy Ghost has done this. Then it gets a little messy in the assignment. The Bible said his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Mary does not give birth to a plumber. Mary does not give birth to a pilot. Mary does not give birth to a banker. She gives birth to a savior. Look at somebody say, a savior, a savior. Anytime somebody needs to be saved, that's not a neat situation. When you call 911, it's not because everything's nice and neat. Hallelujah, God. When you call 911, it's an emergency. When you call for rescue, when you call and there's a need for salvation, is because something messy is going on. Hallelujah to God. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Hallelujah as to whether or not you've ever had to call 911. I'm not even going to ask you. I don't even want you to be embarrassed in the house of God. But whenever you need to be rescued, it is because there is a messy situation going on. And I want you to understand when she gives birth to the Savior, she does not have an epidural. She does not have physicians on speed dial. She's not in some water somewhere giving birth in a bathtub. Y'all not going to talk to me here. I know, I know we got children in the house and there's only so far I can go, but can I tell you there was a weeping and a gnashing of teeth going on there. It wasn't some easy thing to do. Hallelujah to God. I was blessed to be in the room when both of them 
them came out and I would not have wanted to be where she was I would have rather to have stood where I was and you got to tell me with all of what we've had in this generation in time for them to come out there was none of that in the end y'all not going to talk to me here there were no angels that came down and said push Mary push you won't even find any midwives there push Mary I believe there was some gripping of stuff I believe there was some screaming y'all not going to talk to me in here you ain't gonna find it on the card nowhere you won't find the delivery of your savior on a card nowhere but it was a bloody mess coming in it was a bloody mess going out glory to God but I thank God for the blood Look at your neighbor and say, I thank God for the blood. Yes, because I was a mess. And he brought forth a savior in a mess. And when he saved me by his blood, he was a mess. But I thank God that his mess cleaned up my mess. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it was a messy situation. Let me get to the last part of this. In verse number 23, I got to close here. In verse number 23, the Bible says, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Can I tell you that in this season I gotta prophesy to somebody in this season please understand you're going to be called to do things that you feel like you can't do the Bible said a virgin shall be with a child let me try that one more time a virgin shall be with a child a virgin speaks of being a novice a virgin speaks of not knowing certain things. A virgin speaks of not having transversed through this place before. But the Bible says a virgin is getting ready to produce. Can I pause and tell somebody you may not have the degree. You might not have all the angel investors. You may not have all the skill set. But God's getting ready to pull you into something that you don't have what it takes to do. But God's going to anoint you in this season. Look and tell your neighbor, say, I'm anointed for this season. I got the clothes here. I'm anointed for this season. Please understand, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son. God's going to name the next thing you do. Yes, let him name the next thing that you produce. Because when you produce it, the Bible says, they shall call his name Emmanuel would you help me close here and just holler out Emmanuel Mm -hmm. that sounded pretty good let's try it one more time shout Emmanuel Mm -hmm. the Bible says that the Emmanuel is being interpreted or if we were to interpret Emmanuel it literally means God with us so Mary gives birth birth to a son and the Bible says that when they look at him over time they would declare this is God with us let me try it another way when she gives birth to her son Jesus he is God in flesh we know that I ain't gonna spend time there God in flesh but what she literally did was she gave birth to a place for God to dwell in and to do everything that we're still preaching about now. Can I pause and tell somebody it's time for you to give birth to what God gave you so that when you're done with giving the birth and the producing whatever it is God has called you to produce everybody that sees it will have the same testimony that's God. Y'all not talking in here. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, shout Emmanuel. 
mm-hmm. said the next thing that I produce is going to be all God the next thing I produce it won't be man made the next thing I produce it won't be man generated but I'm going to produce something that God's going to get the glory out of I may cry producing it I may scream producing it it might be messy coming out but God has anointed me for this season and in this season I'm going to give birth to something that's going to give glory to God I'm going to give birth to something that my children will say that's God mama I'm going to give birth to something that my grandchildren and great grandchildren will declare God did it this is this is the season of God did it that's the season that we're living in now the season that God did it you will open up your mouth and you will give your testimony but you will start your testimony by saying God did it how did you get in the house God did it how did you graduate when you did God did it how did you get out of debt God how did they come home early y'all not saying it loud enough how did you finally get healed God did it how did you get loose of your walker and your wheelchair God I need somebody in here to recognize that this is the season that God did God produced God led look at somebody and say neighbor it's risky because God is trusting me with something like that it's risky because I know my failures and I know my faults but he knows how to take his hand and put it on cracked vessels and anoint somebody like me and anoint somebody like you so lean on somebody I got to go to my seat and tell your neighbor say neighbor it's risky it's risky but it's worth the risk it's worth every tear it's worth every scream it's worth every praise it's worth every push is worth every prayer is worth every hand clap because when it's all said and done I'll give glory to God and say God did it I said God did it I shout it because God did it I'll tell the world God did it when I post on Instagram it will say God did it I ain't got time to tell you the details but I just gotta tell you God did it if I had time I'll tell you the day to day trouble but all I can tell you is God did it let's try one more time how did you come out of it yeah how did you pay it off how did you move from there to there God did it how could you afford it God did it how did God keep the marriage together y'all not saying it's strong enough how did God turn it around in the courtroom God did it I can't explain it I just gotta tell you that God did it to God be the glory great things he has done to God be the glory great things he's done to God be the glory great things yeah, 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 yeah. Look at somebody across the aisle and say, Great things, great things. Hey, shout it across the aisle, shout great things. That's what's happening for you, great things. God puts, God puts part of his plan in the hands of a man who didn't want to do it was trying to figure out how to get out of it. And God sends an angel saying, you, you got to walk this thing out. 
I know you don't want to put up with what you got to put up with, but there's more. Somebody needs to hear me. There's more riding on this than what you want to put up with. That's why I believe, Apostle, that uh, he tells the angel, the angel rather, tells him, he says, Joseph, thou son of David. Not just little Joe. Joseph, son of David. In other words, who's talking to you now, your bloodline has history with. So if he has helped David, if he helped Solomon, and you are, in, you are in line and you are partly blessed because of the line you have come in. So when I introduce myself to you and I recognize who you have come from, I'm trying to help you to understand it's not just you that's in this. Because I'm trying to come through a line of misfits. I'm trying to come through a line a folk that was told you you would never amount to anything. I'm, I've, I've been trying to come through a line of a harlot. I'm trying to come through the line of, 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 of Ruth. And I'm trying to come through this line of, of David and all his mix-ups and mess-ups. I'm trying to come through this line. If you give up now, we're too close. Psalmist declare that I'm too close to give up now. So if I give up now, it's not just me. If I quit now, that's why it's risky. Because it's a risk. It's not just today. We can't just build ministries for today. We got to build now for things that we won't be able to see the end of. So it's risky because he's got to put his plan in the hands of humans who can choose whether they want to do it or not. So he sends Gabriel, sends, and tells him, listen, you can't, you can't put her away publicly or privately. I need you to bring some sense of cover for her. She's three months pregnant. And y'all not married and consummated the marriage yet. So if you take her as your wife, you, in a sense, are covering these three months. It's quiet in here. You, you, you can keep people off of her if you do this. Because it's not just about you. There's some others that are going to be blessed by what you cover. So... Give Mary some cover so that when she gives birth, she's got the covering of family around her so that he can do what he needs to do and grow up without always being ostracized early. Because some of that stuff is going to come a little later. I got to make sure that he's in the right place at the right time and in the right family being shaped by the right influences because what you are shaping is not just for you. He must have done a pretty good job because by 12, he's, he's in the temple by himself talking to doctors and lawyers about the law. When was the last time your 12-year-old could quote scripture? It's quiet in here. Mm-hmm. Like we can quote every song that's out now. But can't find a scripture to save our lives. He's in there holding court with lawyers and doctors. And when they finally found him, he said, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? And there's, there's a, I, I know I mean, people argue about, you know, what color was he and all that kind of stuff. And you can do all that kind of stuff if you want to. Um, um, but you can't tell me that he, he wasn't uh, of color because the Bible says after he says, um, did you know I must be about my father's business? And um, the Bible says, uh, and he went back home with them and was subject unto them. Okay, y'all missed it. Um, uh, Pastor Scott, I believe he got a whooping. Um, 
you don't find him ever getting lost again. You don't, you don't hear anything else about him going astray while he's in their house. It's quiet in here. Bible says he was subject unto them to the day of his showing. All I came here to say is this. Your assignment is risky. Whatever God's called you to do, business, whatever God's called you to do, ministry, in church, out of church, whatever he's called you to do, it's not romantic. And if you think and envision, see, God, the Bible says we, we prophesy in part, you know, because we know certain things in part. And so if you romanticize the details that God didn't give you, you might assume that where you are is not God's will because you romanticize the middle. He told you you were going to the nations. So you just assume you're going to be flying first class to get there. And you thought when you went to the nations that, that you, you would be in some plush hotel. But then when, when the ministry that needs you told you you got to pay your own airfare to get there. And make sure you get your shots and get your net together. Am I right, Apostle? Get your, so when you sleep, you don't die. See, we like to romanticize things because we don't have the details. Because we believe, well, God wouldn't let me suffer. God wouldn't let me go through. My Bible says, yea, and all those that will live godly shall suffer. Persecution. That's the book. That's the Bible. That's what we, that's in here. That I'm going to go through something. My Bible tells me in the book of Psalms, and I'm done. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many afflictions righteous. Don't go together. I got a bunch of trouble and I'm righteous. He tells us in the book of Romans, he says God's going to use the good and the bad, the happy and the sad. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I want you to understand, you can handle the assignment. Whatever it is, you can handle it. It's risky. But if you walk by faith, not by sight, you're going to see the end of what God showed you. You're going to see the full manifestation of what God showed you. If you're here and you can, please stand quickly to your feet. I'm done. The Christmas story is not romantic. It is risky. It takes a young girl by the name of Mary and deposit the most precious gift in her if I were at home I, I would share more but let me suggest to you heaven's calling somebody And I won't take that extra controversial route. I'll just suggest to you that Mary was not in her 30s. She was young. She goes through what she goes through. We are the better because of it. Hear what I'm saying, not what I'm not saying. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. 
When you and I produce everything that God wants us to produce the way God intends for us to produce it, no one will be able to get the glory but God. It will be another example of Emmanuel in the earth. God with us. As long as the body of Christ is in the earth and we're doing what the body of Christ is designed and anointed and graced to do. It's one example over and over again of God still being with us. There's going to come a day when God's going to come and take us away. And things that could happen now that are not happening because the saints are still here will have free reign to happen. That's why we've got to do all that we can to save as many as we can. I really believe time is shorter. And I've been hearing that since I was a little boy in this church. And I still believe it's true. If it was true 40 some odd years ago when I sat on that second pew, it's even truer now. 40 some odd years later. Lift your hands right where you are. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word and your reminder that things are not always going to seem like they fit or seem as if it is your will. But God, help us to live through, walk through, love through, share through in this season. Father, for those of us who you in this season have been talking to us about releasing into this earth realm those things that you have called us to do, I pray, God, that you would give us the boldness to do it, to trust you that no matter how crazy it may seem, that if you called us to do it, you'll make sure that we have the resources to get it done. And God, I thank you. Thank you for trusting people like us to do something to bless other people. We're not worthy, but thank you. We don't deserve it, 